Thanks for giving some time to us. Um, I just read in a small biography about you that you started playing guitar. And I was just wondering, That's right. do you still touch a guitar? I do. I mean, sometimes, you know, it's frustrating. Either you have a sample or you hear something that's a really good idea. You, you grab the guitar and knock it in. Sometimes I do, like, a, if I need stabs, I can do, like, power riffs, and you distort it with one of those plugins, amp farm and stuff. It can be really efficient. Or maybe sometimes you want a really cute breakdown. You just do a ding, you know, one of those. So it's a good thing to know. Do you, yeah. has it always been there during your uh, music career? The guitar? What do you mean? The guitar? Yeah. Uh, not really, no. There was, there was a time, it depends on how dance music changes, you know, sometimes it's more electronic, sometimes, you know, during the disco times, it was actually quite useful to do a little, you know, funky riff in the background. And I've noticed that doubling basses with a, a string, actually, if you listen to a really small speaker, like a MacBook or, or, you know, like an iPod or something like that, you really hear the bass line, even though it's just blended in. So it's, it's always been a, a, a good trick to have sometimes. Do you play bass then? I try. I mean, it's harder. Yeah. And you can't, what you do is you, have, you play the whole track and then you just cut everything up to pieces and then you make your bass line. It usually slides, actually. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, is it for you then, uh, maybe yeah, so a lot of producers from nowadays, they start on a computer, maybe, yeah. and some have a background more in, in, in keys or in other instruments. Does, does this thing, is it important for you to have a little bit of the touch with a, an extra instrument, or uh, do you nowadays no, feel that it's not necessary? Well, it's, it's so many interesting things that we forget. No, I'm totally native. I, I, I use uh, Logic on a Mac, and everything is plugins, everything is very little samples, most is running live. but. You know, lately, one time I recorded the room. I put two mics in and just played the drums and recorded that back in. It's amazing. It's, it, it, it sounds like you're in the track. It's such a simple technique. And you know, if you think about it, the reverb is a, you know, synthesized room. That they try to make it sound like a room, but this is an actual room. So you get that natural feeling. Really weird. It feels like you're in the track. You hear stuff behind you and stuff. It's really very cool. Is that for you as a producer important to to, to experiment and try to develop yourself in, in, in finding new sounds or new yes. ways of, of, of well, of I force myself not mm -hmm. to do the same thing. It's very hard, you know, especially timing on keyboards. You have a style you play, dun 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 dun. But then I force myself to play the doom 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 doom, you know, like looping on triplets. Because, uh, you know, most kids today, they loop a little file and you get this weird pattern. Mm -hmm. So when they play chords, they play the chords in the same weird pattern. And it creates a trend, you know, like, now you can't almost, you can't hear straightforward chords because it sounds boring, you know. So yes, I try to, to when I play out, I still play a lot, you know, DJing every weekend. So I hear what, you know, what the guys are up to. And sometimes that's a great idea. And I do something of my own, you know, inspired by this.